When it comes to OpenGL and Vulkan, the graphics libraries the average Linux user is going to be using, Linux support has always been relatively good. Obviously, there's plenty of places for improvement, but it's good enough to actually work. But for more compute oriented tasks like 3D modeling, like video editing, like handling giant spreadsheets, you're probably going to want to have support for OpenCL. Now, things like CUDA also exist, but that's a whole separate beast. And the support for this hasn't exactly been, um, great is the best way to put it. So Intel's pretty much always had an open source stack. Right now, that being the Intel Compute Runtime stack. The only issue is they didn't have GPUs anybody would want to be using for any serious work. For AMD and NVIDIA though, these work perfectly fine with their proprietary drivers and on NVIDIA, those are the ones you're probably going to want to be using. But AMD, you probably want to use their open source drivers, which don't have an OpenCL implementation. Now there are some open source alternatives that are available, but they're either not good or not consistent on the hardware they support. But with the upcoming release of Mesa 22.3, this is beginning to change. This is scheduled for some time between right now and early December. So it's basically just around the corner. So much earlier this year, back about eight or so months ago, this merge request was made by Carol Herbst, adding Rust DCL. Goal. I wanted to learn Rust. And I was thinking, why not implement OpenCL inside Mesa and see how nice it would be to use Rust inside Mesa? Now, anybody else making this pull request, this merge request, whatever you want to call it, would be ridiculed and basically laughed out of the room. But Carol Herbst is not just some random developer that's trying to shill Rust. He is trying to shill Rust, but that's a whole separate thing. This is someone who is very, very active inside Mesa, and not just inside Mesa, is a very accomplished developer in things like Novo as well, has been involved in some of the other OpenCL implementations, and basically is someone very familiar with the Linux graphics stack. If there's anybody who's going to get involved with writing an open C implementation in Rust inside Mesa, which wasn't already using Rust, this is bringing a new language into the Mesa project, this is the person you want to be doing it. But you may be wondering why you should care altogether. Everything you've been doing so far, it's not really mattered. And for you, the average everyday Linux user, OpenCL really doesn't matter, but for more compute and creative tasks, this can be incredibly useful. FFmpeg, for example, has the ability to offload to the GPU through OpenCL, and FFmpeg is the backend for a lot of the video editors and video recorders on Linux. Then there's things like LibreOffice Calc. If you have a giant spreadsheet, you can use OpenCL to offload that processing onto your GPU. There's things like DaVinci Resolve, which is a proprietary video editor, but pretty much doesn't function without OpenCL. And then there's things like Darktable for processing photography. And there's plenty of other software available out there as well. Now, most of this software will function without OpenCL support, but in many cases, it won't make the best use of your hardware. Now, I mentioned Intel has their compute runtime stack already. This new support in Mesa is going to support Intel, and it actually does benefit Intel as well. Now, you don't have to worry about setting up your Intel compute runtime stack. It's just all in Mesa, and it pretty much should just work. Now, this isn't just some merge request that was pulled out of thin air and is magically working. This has been through a lot of iteration. So you see a lot of random ones that are like, oh, one commit here, one commit here. But there are some that are like 900 commits, 73 commits, 85 commits, 500 commits, 1500 commits. And this is before we even get like, everything working with feature support. This is just dealing with getting the tests to pass and everything to seem like it's working basically like it should. And that just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going and going. But what you'll notice is even though this has been going for quite a while and a lot of commits are coming in, 
there's not that much discussion happening in the merger quest itself. There are these occasional comments and someone will be like, hey, I tested this, this is the result I got, things like that. But considering that it's not only a new OpenCL implementation, but also written in Rust, there's not that much discussion about whether this should be done. Now, from my understanding, most of the discussion is happening over on the IRC and the mailing list. The GitLab is mainly for doing the technical testing. But do you know how you know that Mesa is a super serious project? The first thread in the GitLab discussing whether Rust is a good idea or not happened six months into the development. Up until this point, everybody was like, okay, don't care, it's Rust, let's just test how it works and see how the implementation is actually going to function. So, I'm pretty fond of Rust as a language for a standalone project. So, not even that Rust is a problem in the first place, just a problem with Rust inside of Mesa. But it needs to be acknowledged that supporting an additional language in the Mesa codebase involves a significant long-term cost to the community. This MR includes thousands of lines of non-generated glue code that needs to be kept in sync with the Mesa data structures wrapped by it. With this MR applied, it becomes costlier permanently for anyone to make changes to the NIR and Gallium interfaces you're introducing Rust wrappers for. I wouldn't oppose such a cost if there was a compelling benefit from it, but in this specific case, the benefit is non-existent. Clover is one of the few corners of the Mesa codebase that exhaustively relies on type-safe data structures and automated memory management, so none of the usual arguments for Rust versus C++ are applicable. Overall, this seems like a demonstration of the abilities of Rust with the lowest possible benefit slash cost ratio for the Mesa project. So Clover is one of the other implementations of OpenCL. Now the problem with Clover isn't necessarily Clover itself. They managed to support OpenCL 1.1, 1.2 perfectly fine. But when they were working on the 3.0 support, cracks started to appear, not because of Clover itself, but because of C++. So this is Dave Arley right here, who's been very active in doing kernel development. We've seen a lot of the stuff he's done before. As the person who's probably tried the hardest to close the gap with Clover support to CL 3.0 and images, three to four times the effort to make Radeon SI work, which is the name for the open source AMD drivers, it seems like it was written for you to learn some of the new fun C++ features. Now these features might bring all the memory safety etc, but they don't bring the developer community. It's the problem with finding a C++ programmer who understands the dialect of C++ and can avoid the traps of the old ways of thinking. If Carol hadn't done this, I'd have rewritten Clover in C because only you can really maintain it. A few people have tried and failed, maybe we are just repeating that mistake with Rust, but Clover is a failed experiment at this point. I'm not willing to burn too much more time on it. Basically the issue is that no one cares about C++, so they don't actually have any developers to work on it, so they're like, you know what? Rust is exciting right now, there is a bunch of people in Mesa who want to do stuff with Rust, Let's just do Rust and see what happens. And hey, if Rust doesn't work out, basically nothing is lost, because Clover development has been dead for a very long time. The latest comment on the thread about OpenCL3 support is about whether anybody is actually working on this, but um, no. And any development that had been going pretty much stopped when Rust DCL got created. Now, if you really want to, you can have a read of this entire complaint thread in here by yourself. But pretty much everything in here can be summed up with a single comment and why none of it actually matters. This one right here. We already had the technical discussion where these same points were talked about at length. It has been ongoing for one year on the mailing list and IRC and even XDC. And its conclusion was that we, the Mesa dev community, are fine with having Rust in Mesa and that we agree to merging Rust DCL. I am not a Rust expert at all, but I loosely followed this topic on the mailing list plus IRC and I think all your concerns were already addressed there some time ago. Yes, there's a cost of using Rust in this manner. Yes, the author is aware of that cost. And yes, the NIR and Gallium maintainers are aware of that cost and they agreed that it is still worth it. 
And as basically nobody besides this guy opposed this, not long after, it got merged. Merging Rusty CL. I asked multiple times for comments and my intent on merging this, and I never got the feeling there was a strong enough reason to block this MR. Multiple people told me just to merge it, and developers affected by this the most never asked me to wait with this or brought up any points I should resolve until then. If we conclude after a while that it is indeed more work than we anticipated, we can always remove it again and think about what needs to change in order to resolve the solution. Worst case, we learnt something and know what to do better next time. Thanks for all the hard work, testing, and suggestions. But our friend here hasn't given up fighting Rust and is continuing tooth and nail. I'd opened a major critical point you've marked as resolved over the weekend. I don't consider it resolved, just didn't have the chance to reply. Okay, so what needs to be changed in order for you to think it's resolved? You could just write Rusty CL in CLC++. Short of that, I'd appreciate it if you left the thread unresolved since my concern hasn't been addressed. And why would I do that? With this merger, it's going to bring support for Intel and NVIDIA Novo, but the AMD side has been a little bit more of a challenge. So initially, someone tried to run this on their RX 580, and they couldn't get it to work literally at all. And there's a good reason for that. It hadn't actually been wired up in the Radeon SI drivers yet, so it didn't work in their GPU drivers. And there's a good reason for this. Initially, a Carol didn't actually have an AMD GPU to test on. So six months ago, he finally got his AMD GPU, so now he's going to start looking into AMD support. Now, there were people that were saying, hey, I'd be happy to test out this for you to see if it's actually going to work, but if you're trying to write drivers, you probably want the hardware there so you can test things as you're going. Now, as of two months ago, he did get some initial support, as in the drivers aren't instantly crashing and they are working with some applications. Now, there's still open CL extensions and things like that that need to be worked on, but it's working in Luxmark, which is better than nothing. But when it comes to full support, there is still a lot of stuff that needs to be worked on. So there is this other merge request called Delete Clover, which is going to be removing Clover from the entire code base. And one of the things that still needs to be worked on is properly supporting Radeon SI. So there's a lot of testing being done in here, a lot of development being done. And even up until like a couple of days ago, things are still being worked on. So it's very unlikely it's going to be fully working by the 22.3 release because they're already in their release candidate stage. So I'd imagine with the next release or a couple of releases from now, then it will actually be good to use with your regular AMD cards. Also support for R600 needs to be done. Now this is the older AMD cards like your HD 7970, things like that. But once all of this stuff's been dealt with and all of this stuff's been merged, using OpenCL on Linux is going to be so much easier, especially easier if you're an AMD user like I am, and like you probably should be if you're building a system with a discrete GPU. Soon, I will actually be able to use OpenCL and not have to jump through any weird hoops, it will just work in Mesa, and that makes me very happy. So let me know, do you have any use for OpenCL or is it just something that's there in the background that you don't really care about? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stella Rivera, paid link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's gonna be it for me and I'm out. <laughs>